Okay, so let's go ahead and begin. So we are going through a, um, a series in November every year, like we had mentioned, every single November every year, we go through a stewardship series. Mm -hmm. And I think it's very, um, uh, what do you call that? We did it on purpose because we know holidays are coming right. and Christmas is coming. And sometimes we just spend all these money. Black Friday. Black Friday. <laughs> we spend all these money and we forget what really what matters most most right and i think coming from segue from a taking stand series uh, we are bombarded with all these different worldly mindsets mm. same thing as with resources that god has given to us and so um it's always good to be reminded right to put things in perspective mm -hmm. to put god back in the equation and to know that he is um he is um, creator of, you know, he, he owns everything and yeah. we are but stewards, stewards and managers of all the resources. And I always say this, you know, um, especially when Christmas comes, yeah. I, our, our prayer is for us to have, um, to be overwhelmed by his presence mm -hmm. and not by presence. Right. Right. Yes. Did you see the play in words mm -hmm. there, right? But that's exactly why we're having this stewardship series. And it's three weeks. The first week of November, we talked about what if you put God first. And, and mm -hmm. I love the wording of the what if because it really provokes your mind in thinking, what if that one decision, what happens if you do that and how it will change your, your life, life and even the mm -hmm. course of your life. So what if you put God first? Right. And we talked about Matthew 6, 33, right? Mm -hmm. CP first. And then the second week, we talked about what if um, you give him your best. Mm -hmm. And last Sunday, we talked about the end of the series is what if you give God your all or mm -hmm. you give God everything, right? And so are you liking the series so far? Tell me what you're thinking. And tell us what you're, if you're liking yeah, the series or, mm -hmm. because I do have a comment after you make a comment right. about the series. It's too. short and sweet. And, you know, can I just tell you, I told this last month too, that every time we have a new series, that's my favorite. And after we finish this What If series, this is again my favorite yeah. so, far. Yeah. so far. But, you know, I love it when we started like, um, seek first God, yes. put God first. Because you, the two following series, um, uh, the fo two following lessons actually, um, give God your best and give God your all. That will not make sense if we don't give ourselves to God first. Yeah. That's yeah. why I like that we started seek first the kingdom of God. See, have that intentionality and desire to seek God first. Yes. So that's why when you come up to that, um, when you truly encounter God and truly grasp that lesson, then week two and week three, that will click to your mind. Yes. And I love it. We ended even with our victory group season last Sunday, mm -hmm. right? And as we were ending, um, I lead a college group. I didn't even ask this question, but one of them just really just said, can I just say this series is so good? Wow. And even from taking a stand, and this is huge from our college, uh -huh. them saying that because they said it's so relatable, mm -hmm. so relatable. And I think even to add more to that, I think coming from Campus Sunday, I said yes. that last month, that it, it felt like everything was aligned and it's in conjunction. Uh -huh. But that's how God's word is too anyway. Yes. And then the Bible, right? It's yes. not supposed to be in segments. Right. What we learn in one series, we carry it over. Mm -hmm. We carry it over. And then you put that in the to chest. Practice. Yeah, yes. put, practice, put it in our chest of spiritual mm -hmm. treasures and dig it out when we need it. Yes. You build upon that, right? And so we love this series. I, I think the only negative thing that I don't like about this series mm -hmm. is that it's too short. Yeah. <laughs> Just like our taking a stand. It was four weeks. Yeah. But we wanted to do more. I mean, I wanted to do more of that. And then this is only three weeks. I want to do more. Right. It feels like K-drama series that there's always a cliffhanger. Like you wanted more? <laughs> like, I don't know about K-drama. We're not going to say here that we do K-drama. That's K -drama. what I heard. Yeah. That's what I heard. But I did start watching. But anyway, <laughs> right. So again, um, we love this series. And so tonight we are continuing with Mark 12. And that's what we talked about last Sunday with that widow's offering. Mm -hmm. And we will unpack the text and see lessons we can learn um, about the scripture. So um, on Mark 12, 38 to 44, follow along with me. Um, so it says there, and in his teaching, so this is Jesus, he said, beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and like greetings in the marketplaces and have the best seats in the synagogues and the places of honor at feasts who devour widows' houses and for a pretense make long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. And he sat down opposite mm -hmm. the treasury and watched the people putting money into the offering box. 
Many rich people put in large sums, and a poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which make a penny. And he called his disciples to him and said to them, Truly, I say to you, this poor widow has put in more, more than all those who are contributing to the offering box, for they all contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. And so last Sunday, uh, our topic for today, so I'm going to jump off on the first point that I talked about. And mm -hmm. the first point that I talked about last Sunday was, um, what if we give knowing that Jesus watches and what we give? Okay, so today we're going to look at three things that Jesus looks at when it comes to giving. Okay? I'm excited about three this. Three things. Are you, are you sure? I am. I don't know. It could be a little like, let's go back. Let's go back to taking a stand on campus Sunday. <laughs> First one that Jesus looks at mm. is motives, okay? Mm. And as we go through this um, message today, we're gonna look at um, the three the three things from the scribes and mm. from the poor widow. Okay. So we're gonna do a contrast a side by side. Mm -hmm. So let's talk, talk about motives here. And we put there pretentious versus pure, right? Mm. Because we already read it. They had pretentious motives because they were hiding under religious facade but they were devouring widows' houses. And it says there, beware of the scribes who devour widows' houses and for a pretense make long prayers, okay? Mm. And if you know me enough, just like last Sunday, I like digging a little deeper here with research and archaeology uh -huh. because I like to just put myself there in that scene. Scribes, I'm going to talk to you a little bit. I, I dug up a little bit on what scribes are. Scribes during the Bible times were teachers and scholars of the Old Testament law. So they're highly educated, they're honored, they're influential people, and they actually draw up legal documents. So they are actually modern day equivalents to judges and lawyers mm, of, today. of today. So they're okay. kind of like judges and lawyers of the day. Greek word of scribes are grammateus, and just that word grammar, I think. Uh -huh. I'm not sure, but I'm guessing that's what it is, and it's gonna come to play later. English translations are writers. And so these scribes that are writers, right, they do such meticulous and precise procedures and methods for copying God's laws or the Torah to ensure that the original writings are passed down from one generation to another down to the T without missing a mark, a letter, mm. or word. So much so, I even read it that when one page just touches another, yeah. they have to do it again. And they revere this work so much that when um, bef uh, they revere God so much that before each time a scribe wrote the name of God, mm -hmm. when they transcribed the name of God, they were to completely wash both their writing instruments and themselves. So, wow. and each word had to be read aloud before it was written down. So, they're that much reverence. Mm -hmm. They pay mm -hmm. that much reverence even to the word God. So, having said all that. They know the law. Mm -hmm. They know God's commandments because yeah. they transcribe, right? To the T. But their hearts are so far away. Mm -hmm. They miss the mark. They miss the truth. Mm -hmm. And they're not even seeking the truth when the truth is right in front of them. In front of them, mm -hmm. right? So, and then let's talk about giving. As far right. as giving, this is how much they follow to the T. The Bible says that they tithe even from the smallest amount taken from the herb garden. That was in Matthew 23, 23. But they cheat widows out of their properties. So yes, they tithe, right? Down to the T. Mm -hmm. But they cheat. And they hide that cheating with long prayers such that no one will suspect mm -hmm. what is happening. Okay. They hide their true motives under religious disguises. No wonder that in Matthew 23, Jesus even places seven woes or in mm -hmm. New Living Translation, what sorrow awaits you? And of course, we're not going to talk about the seven rules, but that's how much Jesus is warning about scribes. Um, Matthew 23, 3, it says there, but don't follow their example, for they don't practice what they teach. Mm -hmm. Jesus is saying that right off, right? Mm -hmm. Practice and obey whatever they tell you, but don't practice what, but they don't practice what they teach. Mm -hmm. So listen to them right? Um, obey the commands, but don't follow their example, pretty mm -hmm, much. Mm -hmm. So they are experts on hiding behind masks and creating facades of devotion to God. But we know they don't have a real relationship with God because they don't obey what God says. Yeah. They cheat. Yeah. 
So um, mentioning, you said that they mentioned about the precise procedure or methods and how they are very mm -hmm. particular with yes. the law, but you know, they failed to obey. Yes. Fail. So head knowledge doesn't matter if you don't know how to even apply it yes at all yes. and you know that's why jesus was saying to them jesus is not disregarding the word of god i mean but that's the word of god that's why he was saying that listen to them but don't follow their example yes so you know scripture and obedience should go hand mm -hmm. in hand this yeah. is something a good example of their hearers but not mm -hmm. doers of the word mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we have a lot of that right? Yeah. Here's doers of the world, right? Yeah. So we talked about the motives of the scribes, mm -hmm. which is impure, mm -hmm. pretentious motives. So let's contrast that with the poor widow. Mm -hmm. okay. And the poor widow, just pure motives. Why do we say that? Because she came to the temple to give her two small <coughs> copper coins as an offering. She brought no motives. There, there was none. Mm -hmm. She just came to bring her offering to God. There was nothing else behind that mm -hmm. reason. Mark 12, 41, 42 says um, he watched the people putting money into the offering box and a poor widow came and put in two mm -hmm. small copper coins which make a penny. And again, because we talked about what scribe was during mm -hmm. biblical times and I pictured a little bit of what the treasury uh, in the temple mm -hmm. was last mm -hmm. Sunday. So we said court of women, right? And there's 13 tre treasury chests all around, right? Mm -hmm. Court of women. But what I didn't tell you guys is with us, the 13 treasury chests actually, there's actually, I think, treasury one to nine. They're all labeled for a specific reason. Mm -hmm. But for the treasury chest one to about eight or nine, they're all mandatory for mm -hmm. sin offerings. So that's how they do offering. But the rest, like from nine to 13, they are voluntary. So the, the rest is for strictly volunteers, right? And that's where the widow actually dropped her offering. That's what the scholars say. So not the mandatory ones, but she dropped her offering with the voluntary. voluntary type. Wow. So she did not have to give an offering, right? right? Mm -hmm. Because it was not required of her. Mm -hmm. The other ones, yes, it's required. You're supposed to go there. But this voluntary offering going to the voluntary chest, it is not required of her. But she still chose to. No one forced her. Mm. She went with no pressure. Regardless, she still did it because her motive was to drop that offering to her God as an act of worship. That kind of changes a little bit, right? I know, like it gives so much weight to that. I, she did. I thought that it was really like mandatory. You have her. to do it. Yes. Yeah, you have to do it. But for her, like so much, I am so amazed. I know. Like, this widow, like it's voluntarily, like, you know, it says here on verse 42, if you take a look at that, it says, came and put. Those two action words, it didn't say came and, and then had, left. <laughs> came and right? had hesitations. Yes. Or came and checked it know, out, changed her mind, and, and then came back. Came back. But at least her motive was there. Right. But she carried through. She followed through. Yes. It's only that. came and put. Yes. Like she was straight to the point, like, I'm gonna go there. Her intention was just to give this offering. Yes. No doubts at all. Yes. No hesitations. Yes. No reservations. She didn't have to. Because like I said, to. it's not required of her. But she chose to. She came and went. She came and followed through. She and came with a mission. Wow. And, you know, I'm just thinking that she has every excuse yep. that she can say that I'm not going to give this anyway. You know, yes. I'm poor. I'm a widow. Yeah. And I. this is only voluntary. Yeah. But her heart yes. is just, I just want to give this offering to yep. God. Yep. Yep. So we contrasted the scribes, right? Pretentious motives and how they are and also the widow. So here's our hard question. So we're going to mm -hmm. bring this out to you guys for you guys to, to reflect your heart and see if the Holy Spirit is saying something to you. Not us, okay? Yeah. So what about us? Sometimes maybe we can't be like scribes. Let's just say, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We know God lo God's laws. We can recite the Ten Commandments by heart. I mean, I even used to have a Ten Commandments by the porch. So when they come in, they know, I'm a Christian, right? It's all faded now, it's gone, right? We know Bible verses, you know. Um, we serve faithfully. 
right? We serve every single Sunday. Everyone knows who we are. Mm. We have a command. We have a presence. We are well regarded. We are invited to every single party, right? Every single social media post, we are there. So there's no FOMO here. You are on everything, right? Our faith sometimes, though, is so much on public display and it's so prominent. But actually, sometimes maybe it's a hard check too. How about how is it, how is it in private? Mm -hmm. How about hard faith in proper, private? Maybe our hearts are so far away from God. Our faith display is so prominent, so good. Everybody knows that you are, you are a Christian. You love yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Everybody knows. Everybody can see. Mm -hmm. But in the private moments with God, one on one, mm. how's that right? We can hide under the guise of religiosity and good works, but there are things in our lives probably that are not pleasing to God, that are Ooh. not aligned with the Bible, like tithing or giving back what belongs to God. You know how we talked about the scribes are devouring widows' houses? Mm -hmm. Consider this. How about, can we be like them? Maybe we're not devouring widows' houses, but how about maybe we are robbing God? Oh, Big one, right? Right. And you know, I was thinking too that um, who you are privately yeah. um, is more important than how yes. people know you publicly. Yes. You know, that's always between you and God. Yeah. That's, you know, no one, you, you think you can deceive God. <laughs> you know, it, yeah. God knows everything. God knows your motives. Yep. And that makes me think as well, you know, talking about our core values like Lordship. If he is not Lord yep. of all, he is not Lord, Lord at, at all. all. Mm -hmm. If he is Lord of, he is your Lord in public setting, he should be Lord when it's only between you and him. Yes. He yes. should be Lord when no one's looking. Yes. He should be Lord when it's your private moments. Yeah. You know? Yep. Yep. Yeah. So this is. This is a big one. <laughs> it is. It is. Heart right? check. A lot this of is heart just point check. one, yeah. right? Yeah. So that was the scribes, right? But for the widow, there was no hiding. Mm -hmm. There was no different face with her face on Monday, different face on a Sunday. It's, she's, she, that's who she is. Mm -hmm. Always. There were no ulterior, mo ulterior motives, no hiding behind mask, right? She came as she was for one reason, and to give that offering to the Lord. You know, we talked about motives, right? And so only God can, sees, can see motives, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. But there are actually some questions that we can check. Ooh, I love that. In our okay. heart, right? Um, here are some questions to, to just put out there, you guys, okay? And don't answer on the oh, comments. No, don't answer on the... You <laughs> can if you want to share, right? Uh, yeah. Between you and the Lord. <laughs> so here are some specific questions to help us evaluate our own motives. Number one, if no one ever knows what I am doing, like if I'm giving, serving, or sacrificing, would I still do it? Mm. If there was no visible payoff for doing this, would I still do it? Would I joyfully take a lesser position if God asked me to? Mm. So bring you back down, right, to a different level. Am I doing this for the praise of others or the praise of our God? Mm. If I had to suffer for continuing what God has called me to do, would I continue? Oh man, the stitching outlines <laughs> <laughs> are being here. Is that, is that a risk for right? Would I still continue to do it? Yeah. Yes, because this is for God. Mm -hmm. This is for God. If others misunderstand or criticize my actions, will I stop? If those who I'm serving Never show gratitude like my kids' church coordinator <laughs> here. All those things I do for her, right? <laughs> or if she doesn't repay me in any way, would I still do it? Would I still serve? Mm. Those are good questions to really ask to align really our motives. Yeah. Is it centered or God? Do we have pure motives? Or is it a facade? Right. Or just yeah. be pretending? Yeah. Right? And sometimes it's good to process this with the Lord. Like, ask God, like, Lord, is there any area of my heart that is not pure motive when I give this to you, when I give this to people? You know, like, the Lord will answer you, and I hope you respond to. And I think that's the critical moment, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. I think the critical moment is even getting to the point of asking God. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we don't ask because we don't want to know. Yes. Because if we ask, 
and he reveals and he knows he's asking you to do something that's hard because mm -hmm. you know so the fact that you said to ask first that's actually yes. a big bold step and once you do that big bold step of asking to reveal that's already humility right which man we mm -hmm. do not, then get ready to listen yeah. and then obey that's good right and actually i i just remembered this um i read this book uh, from Larry Osborne, if I'm right, with the author, um, Accidental Pharisees. So Pharisees oh, yeah. don't think that they are disobeying God. They think they are obeying God mm -hmm. to the T, like what you yes. were saying, because they know the law. Yes. They know the law. But, you know, when you come to God, because God's going to reveal what's impure motives yeah. in your heart. Mm -hmm. you know? So that's why they don't come to God and ask God in yes. the first place because they think they are obeying God because they know the law yeah yeah mm -hmm. right yeah. Yeah. so we talked about um, motives right that's important to Jesus especially when it comes to giving the next one is posture mm -hmm. what our posture is when it comes to giving and so right off we know the scribes are it says here they like to walk around in long robes and like greetings in marketplaces and they have the best seats in the synagogues in the places of honor and feast and they make long prayers. So, long story short, they're a bunch of show-offs. Mm. <laughs> show-offs. <laughs> they flaunt. They are very visible. You know when they are around because you, you won't miss them. They're like the ones that draw the most attention with their long robes or their long tassels. I mean, I bet you there's actually probably bells in those tassels so that when they go <laughs> around, you can, you can hear them. them because they like the attention. Like the Pharisees right? are here. <laughs> yes, right? Extra wide prayer boxes with scripture yeah. verses inside just to tell them who they are, right? They like to have seats on the head table at banquets. They like seats of honor in the synagogues. And they like respectful greetings in the public. If we had a, um, a parking spot <laughs> in, in the old city, <laughs> They will be there, and yeah. they want their name reserved in gold. Oh, yeah, reserved. Yes, yes, right at <laughs> the very beginning. And actually, they won't even park. They will go and ask one of our ushers to park for the ballet. <laughs> wow. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but it says here in Matthew 23, 5, everything they do is for show. Mm. For show. And the show they create, and what? It's a great one for the mass, yeah. right? So that's the scribes. How about the poor widow? What was her posture? One word, humility. Because mm. she put in the two small copper coins amounting to just a penny. In Mark 12, 40 to 40, says, a poor widow came and put in two small copper, coin, copper coins, which make a penny. Mm -hmm. So could you imagine as the poor widow coming to the temple with so many people? Um, because during that time, actually, uh, the temple is actually a, a lot, it's like a gathering place. Ah. Uh, even, uh, I think a couple of chapters before mm -hmm. this widow's offering, this is a time when Jesus actually drove the, the merchants off the temple because mm -hmm. they, were, they were just disrespecting mm -hmm. the house of God. So people like to congregate in temples. So as a widow, could you imagine you going, you going there, um, there's so many people, eyes are on you, ears are on you because like I said the treasury chests are shaped like trumpets mm. it just so happened to shape like that so then when the rich people drop the uh, many coins it will make that sound mm -hmm. and with that two small coins it would barely make a sound so they're probably watching you they're probably doing some whispers here um, coming I don't, in I don't hear a sound yeah, at all like, like look yeah. at that lady you know mm. but she disregarded all that the what ifs mm -hmm. she disregarded all this notion of man how embarrassing or uh, i'm embarrassed i'm shy to go in no yeah. it wasn't about that she was on a mission right the dropping of coins was a some humble act of sacrifice she knows that doesn't amount to anything significant but it mm -hmm. came from her heart right two copper coin, coins mm -hmm. to a penny she knows that more than any amount or any monetary value god is after her heart mm -hmm. god is after her heart and her heart she offered fully to her God. Mm -hmm. That posture of humility stems from her relationship with God. I know she has an amazing relationship with God. Yeah, and I love what the um, what the poor widow exemplified. Like, you know, true followers of Christ are not 
distinguished by show, showy spirituality. Mm -hmm. But look at this widow. It doesn't matter who's looking at her, but her heart is just, you know, like, I want to give this to the Lord. Yeah. Like, it doesn't matter if you're looking at me or not, or you know, whatever it, your comments it, are. It feels like she had, like, blinders on. Right. You know what I mean? She doesn't, it doesn't matter to her who says this, who's, it doesn't matter. She's there. She had a mission. She's there to offer. And uh, let me see. We have some comments here. We do. From Pastor, who's, who's this? this? <laughs> Wait, oh, no. Why is he commenting? <laughs> who's this? <laughs> Pastor Robert Hearn. Okay, he said, uh, maybe that's not a bad idea. Reserve parking space and valet. <laughs> All right. Do you want me to park your car? <laughs> Would you trust me? I'll, um, I'll, I'll, I'll volunteer in ushering. I'll just park your car. Just me. <laughs> Hello, Pastor Robert and Jen. Um, they're, they're in the Manila, Netherlands. They're in Manila. Manila. They're having a, a great time. Yeah. And they can't wait to download what God has been depositing their hearts. Because um, they're having a great time. I think... Not so much about the weather you're having a great time with, but the rest are having a great time. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> so, let's walk back after that comment from our pastor, right? Destroying our mood here. No, <laughs> Bring you back, right? Bring you back. Posture of humility or posture of um, just, just being show off, right? Mm. How about when we do things for God, right? I think God does not need us to show off. I mean, we don't need to wear our I love Jesus so. shirts and be out there in the evening with glow, right? <laughs> and have the biggest Bible and yeah. flaunt it around mm -hmm. or put our hands together mm -hmm. and walk like this and greet people or talk a certain way, right? right? Because God knows, God sees and God knows our inner posture. Again, because Pastor Robert commented, I just suddenly been reminded, right? We don't have to sound so spiritual and so religious. Like as if we know the verses, like "How are you, God?" Oh, by the grace and mercy of our Lord Jesus Hi. Christ. Hallelujah! You know, and then what does it say? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. So, there's a certain tone and how you say it yeah. in a religious way, like. God, God knows our inner posture, so there's no need for us to show off things yeah. for God. And right? you know, sometimes you don't have to wear it. People will know how you live your life. Yeah. People will see that. You don't, it, it doesn't matter what you wear. Like, so you have those I love Jesus shirt. I mean, I'm not saying it's bad. Yeah. I mean, we do have our merch, you know, um, with every nation. But, you know, people will see it, the way you live your life. And sometimes... You're always thinking about, on the physical sense, like, you have this dress to impress, but is God really impressed with your heart? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, right? Mm -hmm. And I think when we say dress to impress in the external things, maybe there's some things internally mm -hmm. that God needs to work on in our yeah. lives, right? Because I think, in the end, God is not impressed with our external. And God says He looks at the heart. Man looks I'm so at thankful, appearance. right? Man looks at the outward appearance. Same. <laughs> I'm so glad. <laughs> God, <I'm> so... <laughs> let's not focus on the outside. <laughs> right? Yeah. So also, you know, when we do things for God, right? Like the widow, money, money is not an issue. Time and distance are not an issue. And the work that's presented to us is not an issue because if we do everything for God, not for men, he knows, and he's glorified, right? Yeah, um, we have a comment. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Robert saying no. <laughs> no, I'll volunteer like the widow. I'll do it voluntarily. <laughs> oh, wow, the Sheena widow. from our live audience. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, let's read this. Sometimes really, as Christians, we really need to calibrate our hearts with God. As sometimes we tend to feel entitled as if Jesus owes us something. Yes. We can always deceive other people, but when we try to perform God, when we try to perform, God, God sees yeah. our heart and motives. Yes. My prayer is for God to reveal His purpose for me and really strip away anything that is not from Him. That Man, so I agree with you. Sheena, if you're close, I wish I could hug you. <laughs> we can later after 8.30. <laughs> I agree. I totally agree. Yes. So, it brings us back, right? The widow thinks what she gave is insignificant. Mm -hmm. So, let's come back, right? 
as I serve team members or even the family, right? Mm -hmm. What little things that we think is insignificant to God. Let's say I'm going to go through a little bit of the list that each of our I serve ministry goes through. Yeah. If you're in hospitality, you think just making coffee mm -hmm. is insignificant. Mm -hmm. TSM, you know, that ruling of cords a certain way. I know it's not, it can't be the other way because something about folding the things, I don't know about cables, but that seems significant maybe. Ushering, picking up the trash when in, in, in bathrooms, right? Um, wiping the Lego bricks yes. in kids' church, right? What else? Um, just things Throwing like that. the trash? Throwing the trash. Sweeping the floor, yes. you know? Right? Those Even things. us, like, going, studying for this, mm. right? It might be insignificant, but, man, it means the world. Well, God owns the world and the universe, but it means so much to Him yeah. if we do everything and for we, Him, right? We always say that we serve for the audience of one. Yes. And this is how I challenge the, my, um, the I serve members, yes. especially in kids' ministry, that I always tell them that, the way you prepare, the way you study, the way you teach, will it be different if your leaders are looking? Because yeah. if you're going to tell me yes, then we have to check our hearts. Because yeah. it's always have to be the same and excellence and giving our best to God. No matter where, no matter if your leaders are there or not. Or like bring back to the insignificance. We think with the kids' church, cutting <laughs> the cutting crafts. or doing uh -huh. arts and crafts. Yes. They're going to throw it away anyway or, or whatever yeah. you think. Yeah. But no, it means so much to God mm. if we do yes. it everything for him. So yes. that's in the church setting. So how about family setting? Mm. You know, you serving your husbands, serving your wives. I mean, I'm just, I'm going to say this, you know, because my late husband is not here to comment. So I'm just going to put him under the bus <laughs> <laughs> and nail him in the coffin or whatever that thing is. <laughs> you know, I used to, man, hate used to hate to dig his smelly socks that's brought in very <laughs> deep in his shoes and for years in our marriage i would say can you please <laughs> i will do the laundry but just take it out but then i've learned through the years lord let me serving my husband be an act of worship when i do my dishes mm -hmm. the dishes for the kids let this be an act of worship yes. when you smile to people mm -hmm. when you give hugs when you write an encouraging letter yes. When you give that one flower, those seem so insignificant. It doesn't even cost anything, a smile or a hug. But if you do it for God, that means everything, not just to God, but yeah. even the people that you're doing yeah. that for, yeah. right? God mm -hmm. is glorified, right? Yeah. So you see, when you have that relationship with God, when you seek Him, when you put Him first, when He is in front and center of your lives, no money can ever be put in that value. That yes. relationship with Christ, yes. uh -huh. no monetary value that can put having in your life is precious. No mm -hmm. money can buy it. So whatever task is placed before you guys, whatever, no matter how small or significant you think it is, do it for God. Because mm -hmm. again, He is glorified. So the next time you clean up that spill, because one of the kids, again, just did something there or in the playground where, man, again, same thing over and over again. Mm. The mundane things that we right. think significant. But if you keep on bringing back God always mm -hmm. as you do that, clean that toilet, take that trash out, do it for God. And thank Him for giving that opportunity yes. to worship you. Even in the smallest things. And I remember what you have said with a widow. Her humility stems from her relationship yes. with God. And when you do even the smallest things, it is so much joy to serve my king, to serve my God. Yes. Even though no one's looking, even though it seems in, in, insignificant. Yes. When you have that relationship, you just want to serve your king, yeah. right? Yeah. So is it enough for you if it's only God who knows what you're doing? Mm. Yep, yeah. yep. We have a comment from Pastor Robert. Our posture is just an expression on what's really in our hearts. Yes. Sounds like Sounds a true good. pastor. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like he's our pastor. Yes. <laughs> it's true, though. And do you know how many times we say this? Mm -hmm. We wrap it in different kinds of sermon, but sometimes we have to hear it over and over again yes. because it aligns because... Mm -hmm. Again, we live in a world, a Babylonian-like culture. Mm -hmm. We're exposed, right? We live in this yeah. world. 
things can get in, worldly mindsets kick in, right. and we forget the things, especially when it gets routinary. Yeah. Routine, yeah. mundane, mm -hmm. you get tired. We do this over and over again. But again, the fresh perspective, every single time you come in, let this be an act of worship to you. Yes. I know it's small, just like with the, with the widow. That didn't amount to anything, uh -huh. but in faith, she knew when she places that in God's hands, right. he will use it extravagantly. Yeah. And can I just tell you, and I'm not going to be apologet apologetic on this one, because I'm, I'm teaching the students to type. Mm -hmm. Even if they're mm -hmm. students, you Ooh, know, I've been telling them that, you know, even if it's the smallest amount that you have, you give you give it back to God. And not because I told you to mm. do it, not because the leaders are telling you to do that, but because this is your act of worship. We give back to God because He is our provider. And like the widow, like I put that as an example, it's two copper coins, you know, that that wouldn't amount to anything or maybe that wouldn't pay the bills, you know? Yeah. When the student type, you know, it, the, it's really small. But the thing is, it, it's about your heart. Yeah. It's yeah. about worshiping your God. Yeah. And that's amazing that you're doing that. You know why? Because now you're teaching them to be faithful in small yeah. things. Because it's easier to teach them to tithe in a small amount. Mm -hmm. Let's say 10 bucks, $10, right. whatever it is that they get, or even birthday. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine tithing on a bigger? If you don't learn how to tithe in a small amount that God is giving yes. you, how hard can it be when that one ten dollars becomes a hundred, right. becomes one thousand, mm -hmm. becomes ten thousand? Mm -hmm. If you don't learn this even at, at this pace, mm -hmm. right? You know it will be hard for you. So start small. Start now. Create that lifestyle and yeah. that habit. Right. Mm -hmm. That posture of humility already even from mm -hmm. the beginning yes. knowing that lord i know maybe this one dollar from my ten dollars is significant to you yes i mean joan probably doesn't even like it when she does the bookkeeping <laughs> and we have the envelope yeah. like heavy yeah. envelopes yeah. yeah right but it doesn't matter yes. because it's an offering yes. and it's a step of faith and i know with this great things are gonna happen god's yes. kingdom okay yes. That There's a comment? Um, not yet. Yeah, maybe. not okay. yet. Okay. okay. We're a little behind here. Okay. So, we talked about... Um, oh, actually, I have. Sorry. You do? Um, we oh, yeah. Gabby. 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 Sorry, Gabby. Just got reminded of the verse in Matthew 6, 4. Give your gifts in private, and your Father, who sees everything, will reward you. Right. Yes. That's, That's the right. same one with don't let your right hand know what's going well, on with your left hand. Yeah. Because you see that recognition, that recognition will you get. Mm -hmm. Only in, in earth. And followed by her dad, <laughs> body say, actually, it's not the two copper coin that pleases God to this widow, but her heart to put everything for God that pleases him. Um, yep. Her faith and trust to God that motivate her to give her all two copper coins. Yeah. The symbol of the copper coins. Mm -hmm. And more than any monetary value, like you said, Bonnie, yeah. it's always the heart behind yes. that. Because we can give away a million dollars. Right. But there's if there you're you're not doing it out of humility or mm -hmm. impure motives or it's a show off or whatever it is, God knows, and that has no value compared mm -hmm. to someone who has given a dollar. Yeah, it's and the even heart behind it, even yeah. not just the amount. Like you can give the million dollars or a small amount, and you could still say, like I already gave my small amount. I gave everything. You could. You know, that's where entitlement comes in. Yep. But the widow, no. Just pure humility. Yep. So we talked about motives. We talked about posture. The third one that I'm, we're going to discuss is uh, Jesus values faith, especially when mm. it comes to giving. And Bonnie okay. kind of oh, alluded to yes, that as well. Right? Yeah. So from the scribes, they place their faith and security on who they are, their status, mm. their occupation, what they can get out of that status, even to the point of stealing from other people. And I'm going to tell you why I said that. So Mark 12, 40 says, who devour widows' houses. Again, a little bit of research because we like to dig, right? A little bit. Context is key. <laughs> Context According is to our key. Pastors. Context <laughs> is key. Do you guys ever wonder, what does devour widows mean? Like, I know you had asked me that mm -hmm. question the other mm -hmm. day. The phrase, and here's from my research, the phrase devour windows, with no Widow, windows, windows. Windows. <laughs> <laughs> widows' houses means greedily cheat window, widows out of their property 
So, because in ancient times, widows actually held little or no power in the courts. So it was not uncommon for a husband to appoint in his will a Jewish legal expert, which is a scribe mm. or a Pharisee to be the executor of his widow's estate. So essentially, this gave the executor authority to oversee the widow's finances and assets. So it would not be hard for the mm. executor, hence the scribe here, for them to find legal ways to trip a oh. widow out of her house and other property. And this is precisely what the religious leaders were doing. So, so yep. So that's the reason why the divine widow's houses, they were essentially uh, making a livelihood mm. or they're generating income out of these vulnerable widows. widows. That's where they're getting their income from. So meaning they take advantage of the widows. Vulnerable situation. Vulnerable widows. For their gain. And then they're gonna type. <laughs> oh, right? They're exploiting the needy so they can grow fatter. Well, that's why. <laughs> and richer. Oh. Fatter and richer. Do, do you see that? When I read that, this is mind-boggling. And that's why the Bible scholars say, no wonder, most probably, that's why the widow had put in just two small copper That's coins. why it like, says she's poor. Yeah. And oh. so then it even adds greater weight to how much of her heart she brought in. She was deceived. She was cheated. That was all that's left. And then and she still gave. gave. But this scribes, right? No wonder mm -hmm. Jesus is denouncing them. Wow. Could you, okay. Could you believe it? Hold on. We have a comment here from Regina giving oh. create that lifestyle. Yes. Beautiful. Yes. It's, it's a, a lifestyle. lifestyle. <laughs> okay. And then Fen was saying, Amen, Amen. The magnitude of what we give or do is nothing compared to the intention of our hearts to honor and glorify God in yes. any form of our worship. Yes. That's good. Right? Yes. So going back to the scribes. Mm -hmm. They place their security and faith, their income, whatever things that they can live off mm -hmm. from the widows even, right? Yeah. Taking advantage of them. But how about the poor widow? Plain and simple. She placed her faith and security in God alone. Mm. Because we saw she gave everything she had, all she had to live on. It mm -hmm. says there in Mark 12, 44, she out of her poverty has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. This poor widow had no job, no yes. money, no security, no other means of support. I talked about this last mm -hmm. Sunday, like under Jewish law, a way to be called widow in biblical times mm -hmm. is not having anyone, not even a relative to support her. Mm -hmm. No one. She had no one, only God. And I'm going to, again, stress this fact what Pastor Joshua said. Mm -hmm. She gave everything. So she cannot depend on anything except on God. Wow. She gave everything. So she cannot depend on anything except on God. So that's just this marinate, right? No comment on that. I'm shocked. It, it's, it's, no, it's mind <laughs> like I right. I I'm still processing with the scribes too. Like how right. how can they do it? <laughs> like that's you know, what I'm saying, but how can they do that? And yeah, and they even know the law as well. Yeah. they know the law. But how can they do that? But yet the bigger magnitude is how can the window still give? Yes. You know how now I just thought about this. As a widow, right? Well, I'm not gonna cry, so let's back up. <laughs> but things have happened, unfortunate to her. She can choose to to just walk away too and mm -hmm. say, you know what? Forget this. I don't know where God is in this picture. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Where God is in this picture and just keep that copper coin. Mm -hmm. And I'm just gonna do something and just start over. I don't know, maybe that. But no, even after all these things, she didn't blame God. N nothing, right? She, she didn't blame God. Nothing. She still offered. She yes. still in humility offered her to coins the love and devotion and selfless sacrifice and giving behind it and offered it to God. And I just remember um, what one of my conversations with Pastor Robert. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but he told me what um, before that we as as a person as a human we're very self-reliant you know yeah. we 
we wanted to rely on this. We're very self-sufficient, you know. We know ways to make money yes. or to generate income. Yes, but looking at this widow, you know, she has nothing to depend on but only to God. God. And she trusted God that much. Yep. Like, you know, up to the last penny yep. that she has. So the hard for big questions for us are where do we place our faith? Where do we place our security on? Is it our jobs that provide for us? Mm. Is that job guaranteed to be with you and supply your needs forever? Is our daily provision hinging on paychecks? Mm. Is it a what or a who? Yeah. You know, when I was um, uh, doing this, I, I started to just reflect, you know. Man, when, when was the last time I had a paycheck? <laughs> oh man, okay, here we go. <laughs> um, you know, um, Kat and I, and, and it's, I think it's not an accident, you know, we, we're both nurses, but um, if for people that don't know, you know, I, I'm a widow. Um, my husband relocated to heaven <laughs> last year in March. Her, his address changed. <laughs> And then I was left with a choice where I don't know what I was going to do, if I was going to sell the house or what's going to happen. And even months later where I had to turn back my career in nursing. But, you know, can I just tell you even that I've never been hungry. We are broadcasting live here at my home, right? And yes. I'm fed. I gave Nespresso coffee to the people. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You know, like, when I really think about it, you know, I think I may not be uh, a description of a poor widow, but I think God placed the situations in my life where I had to depend on Him. Yes. Like, like, completely and yes. fully because I didn't have somebody who I process things with or make financial decisions with. But during this moment, I would never exchange this for the world. I would never exchange those moments of taking long walks with God yes. and just reading the Bible, reading Habakkuk and, and Job and Lamentations and just mining it and just seeing who He is in my life. And truly, He is trustworthy. His track record in all my life, right? I've never been left to hunger or thirst for anything, yes. right? So to me, this speaks so much to me because it's true. None of the scribes says that right. one, man, my, <laughs> my blood is boiling with that. And I have been cheated, but uh, that's a whole different story because they took advantage of my vulnerable situation, but that's a whole different story. But just relying on God, I mean, God made a way for me to do that and to taste and see that he is good and he is good. He is, is faithful. Good. He is trustworthy. And I can say that over and over again because I've lived it. I've lived through it and I'm still living. Wow. It. Yeah. yeah. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, oh. um, talking about our careers, and this is not to put ourselves on a pedestal, but being a nurse, that's our two copper coins. You know, like I, I also remember that stepping up to be a campus missionary i have to leave my career and you know i thought nursing being a nurse gives me so much security yeah. not just now but even in the future i have all my savings and everything but when god calls me you know god will strip away everything that i have been depending on yeah. but only to rely to him but I never got angry with God. Yeah. I never got mad. <laughs> I never got mad at him. Like the more I see his goodness, yeah. the more I see his faithfulness in my yes. life, the more that I see that I only have one provider and I only have one source. Yeah. And that is him. And I will not exchange my career in obeying God yeah. and fully depending on him. And that makes me question to you guys too. What is your two copper coins? Yeah. What is something that you can give God your all? I'm not saying that you guys should be quit, your career. quit your career and be a full time too. If that's what God is calling you, by all means, we'll be happy about that. But, you know, what is something that you're really depending on yes. right now? Who is truly your source? Yes. And, and again, like when and, you come to God, yes. when you ask Him, He will reveal it to you. Testing will come, wilderness will come. But then again, 
we can attest to God's faithfulness. His promises never fail. Yes. And and really, as you're saying that, I love the song Crowns. Yeah. I'm not gonna sing, but <laughs> I lay and I lay my crowns down at your feet. Right. Yeah. You are holy, holy, and I lay my life as an offering because you are worthy. I mean, just to speak so much where here it is, Lord. We offer everything, yes. right? Our careers, whatever it is, like whatever that we think we were depending on, right? Yeah. In replace of you, right? Because you are more than enough. You alone can satisfy anything and everything in my life. Oh, okay. Oh. So <laughs> let's move. Let's move on. <laughs> so we talked about what Jesus looks as, right? We talked about the motives. We talked about the posture. We talked about the faith. And so let's talk, talk about the result now. So yeah. what's the result? Like having that contrast. So with the scribes, it says in Mark twelve forty. Mark twelve forty, they will receive the greater condemnation. Mm. They will receive the greater condemnation. Such strong words of Jesus. In other versions, it says they will be severely punished. And we say, why? In a nutshell, I think it's because they should have known better, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. the scribes are supposed to be well-versed in God's commands. I mean, yes. the Old Testament scripture in Jerusalem, and yet they don't practice what they preach, yeah. right? They know that widows are close to God's heart and that they should be taken care of with extreme importance and with just duty. I love this verse. I'm going to mm -hmm. just put it right it says here in exodus 22 22 to 23 it says here you shall not mistreat any widow or fatherless child if you do mistreat them and they cry out to me i will surely hear their cry so people don't make me cry okay that's why i take care of you <laughs> <laughs> you you don't want me to cry because it says here god hears it right uh we have a comment from pastor robert wow Two copper coins, Kat and Lizette. <laughs> oh, is that what you're gonna offer? <laughs> Bring in the firewood. Pastor <laughs> oh, Robert, what is time? What is the time there? <laughs> is he supposed to be asleep? <laughs> yeah. So those people who have heard God's word, right? Going back, should obey it as well. We, we talk about that. It is a different story if you've never heard about it. Mm -hmm. It's a different story mm -hmm. if you've never heard about. It. But the scribes, they have heard, they preached it, they transcribed yeah. it, but they did not obey it. Yes. Hence the severe punishment, mm -hmm. there's greater condemnation mm -hmm. there. So it's even a warning to us. Yes, I was going to say that It's too. a warning yeah. to us. Those people that read God's word, mm -hmm. who sits down at sermons, at the pulpits, right, who, who goes to... Sunday school, mm -hmm. goes in the huddle, right. on anything, victory group, mm -hmm. leader meetings, mm -hmm. we hear God's word. Yes. The question is, do we obey it? Mm -hmm. And also, that makes me like, a while ago I was thinking like, man, this Pharisees, these scribes, you know, what are they doing? But sometimes I have to check my heart too. Am I might become yes. like them. Like yes. again, don't think about any other person. Yes. It's a heart check. Yes. Like, is there anything in my heart, Lord? Like what I yes. ask about, is there anything that is impure? That my motive is for me to be glorified and not you. That when I give or when I serve, is it for my own glory or for you? And the Bible yeah. says when we preach God's word, we are judged even more harshly. Right? Okay. Matthew seven twenty one, and it's not there. You know, it, it says there, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is mm -hmm. in heaven. Again, I'm reminded of that sermon that Pastor Robert did. I don't know what series that was, but the who you, the who you Isn't lesson. Isn't the walk, the talk? Talk? I it's don't like, know. like walk. But do you guys remember that? Yeah. The who you. Yeah. Where... Yeah. We can claim, mm -hmm. we know our master, mm -hmm. we claim Lord, but I went every Sunday, I mm -hmm. served for you. I right. won Volunteer mm -hmm. of the Year Award. Yeah. I did all these things, but God can say, I don't know you, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. who, I don't know you, who, who are you? Who you, yeah. right? Oh, right, so that's the scribes. So how about the poor widow? There's a little hope here, <laughs> poor widow. What happens, what's the result? Jesus called his disciples. 
because he wants the story to be highlighted in God's kingdom. Mm. And the highlight is not just in eternity here on in earth, but also in heaven, mm -hmm. right? Mark 12, 43, truly I say to you, this poor widow has put in more because of her act of humility, her selfless devotion and her sacrificial giving, her story is talked about mm. by millions of people. Yes. And it's presented in sermons after sermons. And it just reverberates in our hearts. Right? Yeah. And the point of this is that Jesus is not about highlighting the poor widow, but her faith. Actually, yes, the object, her, the of, object her of her faith. faith. Jesus was also admiring her generous and sacrificial I mean, let's not strive to be a poor widow. Oh, now, yeah. Okay? <laughs> That's not the lesson. Yes. But but the object of her faith mm -hmm. to see how much that's how much she loves the Lord mm -hmm. and how much she depended on yes. the Lord and how much of just total dependency and just giving everything the thing to God. Giving everything to God. Like beyond calculations, beyond her comfort. I can't I just like the word no reservations. Yeah, no. And no hesitations yes. at all. That he's she's just willing to give. Yes. To and, give everything to God. And everything so then she has no other no cent to live on yes. in other versions she had nothing else yes. Right? yes so here's our last hard question before we move on to our prayer so do you guys ever wonder why you are not abounding or not basking in god's favor and blessings or maybe why it seems like you're struggling paycheck mm. to paycheck and the question is why am i not making progress with my finances over and over again it's just i'm just not having that breakthrough mm. and just maybe here's some thoughts just maybe right and let the holy spirit uh, speak to you if you truly want to know and ask that question is it because maybe you are not faithful with what god has given you yeah. right now are you obeying what he is telling you especially in regards to giving not giving back what belongs to mm -hmm. him mm -hmm. or are you mismanaging his resources that he has entrusted to you. Yeah. And I hope you guys will not give just because you want it to be blessed by God. I mean, there's there's blessing in obedience, Bless, but that's not the point. Yeah. My point yes. is that do you truly see yeah. that God is your provider? Yeah. That because the widow is willing to give her all because he knows she knows her provider. Yeah. Yeah. And we learned that in, in, in Matthew 6, 33, the mm -hmm. first, right? Where Jesus does not want to be, it's not a means to an end. We right. don't seek the blessings, but we seek, we seek God the first. blesser. Mm -hmm. We don't seek the fruit, the product, uh -huh. but the one who can do that yes. for you. Yes, and God will take care of you. And I believe that um, the Holy Spirit is really moving and ministering to each and every one of us, even right now with us like the holy spirit is really speaking and 